What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Directors React? Stunt People React? VFX when, Artists React? When neither of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this might be this might be a stunt men react. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. No, no one saw that at all. But all these stunt men react videos and you can't react to a stunt? Oh, oh damn. Brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm here with Danny and Michael uh, from Raka Raka. I've been wanting to get these guys here for years, and they're finally here in the USA because they made a movie. And it's going to be a wide release movie in America. A24 picked it up. I'm holding hype on the tips of my fingers. There will be violence. Let's go. There let's will be go. Violence. Let's, let's go. get into it, man. <laughs> Gentlemen, I present to you the divinely chosen ruler of the Govia, King Philip! Look at them, so complacent and happy. Ruling is so easy. This is my moment. No turning back. I challenge you! So uh, with the wrestling stuff, there is no chance for takes or like proper setups for like proper stunt stuff. I mean, they've got the, the mat on the floor, but the style of wrestling Michael does is like hardcore deathmatch wrestling, where the point of it is to yes. get hurt. Yes, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> well, so, so it takes it to another element of risk and danger. You get so much more of an appreciation from the fans, I think, because deathmatch wrestling is like going extra mile and like, you know, risking so much more, you know, physically than, than standard wrestling, which is already risky. It's like really extreme performance art, where it's like the body's the canvas, and the blood's the paint. But yeah, you don't use, <laughs> see like it, it's different from a film, like you don't use fake barbed wire, you don't use fake glass or fake blood or, or fake thumbtack, like it's all real. I'm surprised you managed to keep going. Can you tell when somebody's actually like doing like, I'm actually hurt versus like, oh, I'm faking hurt. Can you tell, is there a subtle difference there? No, I guess it'd, it'd be for the viewer. For me, it's like, I just remember being in a lot of pain. Like that's not a Ronald face, like a crazy, <laughs> ooh, that's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time that I wanted to scream, I remember I had to do it in that voice. Oh ah! you know? <laughs> so every time I'd like scream, I'd have to do it in that, that pitch. This is insane. This is insane. This drop right here. Okay, so you're lying there and there's a dude like, you know, a story above you, 10 feet above you, and he jumps. Do you tense up? Yeah, so, so you're supposed to stay like loose and then right on impact, it's like, you tense up just the last second and you, and you go up, you, you bring your arms up a little bit so it like there's like a, a force stopping it instead of just like onto nothing you know right at the last second you'll see me like I'm see I'm there and then right at the last second I'm so you have to be up. really accurate with your timing your aim all that kind of stuff yeah and I thought he was gonna give me more time because <laughs> <laughs> when it, he I, I thought he was gonna like really you know act up to the crowd yeah and he just went and then I was like, <laughs> I'll sit up there, I'm like, man, he's high. I'm like, oh, he's coming. <laughs> so how do you signal, like, you're trying to play hurt, right? And so you are a little hurt too. How do you also signal, keep going? So that they'll come in and whisper something to you. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. <laughs> man, I don't want to ruin wrestler trade. I'm not a wrestler at all, but like they'd come up and before they do something to you, are you good, da da da, or tell you what the next move is. So then we did another event, uh, back a backyard event called Racker vs Racker, where we just wrestled in the backyard. Daddy! <laughs> you just go. Yeah, Marco just goes. He's really rough with me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, you want to wrestle? Huh? <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Woo. Yeah, it's this weird addiction like I felt so like it's, it's exhilarating. Weird, exhilarating adrenaline rush for some reason. And the most painful part of this match was none of the barbed wire, it was that. Really? For some reason, yeah, that hurt me. Ouch. That was the only thing I remembered like hurting. Oh, This next part's very mean. I was like, like pretending to be hurt. He puts my, I don't know, what is he doing? Oh, <laughs> damn. damn. <laughs> but I knew it wasn't gonna go in his eye. Now we can talk about professional stunts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow, you don't use any of this. <laughs> Look, this is, this is the birth of the artists, right? This is, we're doing the origin of these directors. 
these visionary filmmakers. This yes. is where you guys came from. Well, it was you like- You gotta tell the whole story. Yeah, yeah well, it's the whole cool. story is, yeah, we had like 12 to 15 kids around the same age and we'd all get together, make movies, and wrestle. Like the wrestling was one side of it and then the movie making was another side of it. But like the wrestling thing was getting dangerous because me and Michael kept trying to top each other. And it was our friend's older sister, Nelly. She was the one that veered us towards the filmmaking side as opposed to the wrestling side. Yeah. She's like, well, I want scripts. I want to I want to see this. I want to see this. And so we veered away from like just hurting each other for no reason to actually like perfecting the craft of filmmaking. Scared Potter. You wish. It was one of these videos that I first saw your guys' stuff. I remember like Freddie was watching, he was like, holy shit, you guys should check this out. And I'm watching this like, damn, these guys know how to shoot action. Right, right. Yeah, so it's more the shooting than the VFX, because it's pretty shit, we've got to admit. No, that's pretty rad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, like, people constantly were saying that the, like, the VFX on our YouTube channel are better than movies. And it's not true. The VFX in movies are better than the VFX on our tell. channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more because when you're doing it on YouTube, like, you have all this planning and like it's gonna take you hours to do that shot so you're gonna make it a special shot and so the shot itself regardless of the vfx is just a special shot it's a big moment right whereas yeah. movies you end up using visual effects all the time whether it's a big moment or not a big moment so emotionally our shots felt like they were better shots because they had more emotional impact not because of the visual effects but because we would only spend our vfx cards on big shots you guys are the same way where like when you guys are doing visual effects they're moments they feel better than movie visual effects in a lot of ways because you guys are like going like, I need to hit somebody with something, like not literally hit somebody with something. I need to like emotionally hit somebody with something. I'm gonna get this effect to do that. And like, it serves that purpose. So it's like, it's triggering that response in you. <laughs> ah! I know that another thing that helps as well is that like once everything's set more professionally, it's less impressive or something. So yeah. I know that like I would always shoot my way of like, it looks homemade, it looks homegrown. And that's why when the big moments happen on like a smaller scale thing, it's like, what the yeah. f where did that come from? Yeah. It just hits people differently. It, you know, the big movies and they've got hundreds of millions of dollars. It's like, yeah, you, you yeah. better have good VFX. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as like, Michael runs through an action, even when Michael starts moving, or anyone starts moving and I'm shooting, I, I just, I, I feel it out and like give everything but, more uh, life. It was like, you know what, I think the style came from like, we had to hide so much stuff because, you know, we had no resources. Mm -hmm. So it was like hiding action and stuff with movement and sound and music to like make it look way more intense than it is, you know? So I think that's where the style came from. Your special effects are really good. Thousand years of I mean, this is crazy work. You guys shot this in what, like two days? Yeah, I know that. I think this was four days this shoot. Yeah, Still, and then like this a week, is insane. A week of, yeah, of yeah. Prep. Are you guys uh, painting the cranes out? Yeah, yeah. We always do things like try to do as practical. practically as possible. So all this is all actual wire work with actual cranes. Like this is like big stunt work you guys are setting. Yeah, every, every like, dollar we ever made on YouTube, we put it back into the videos. Like that's why we're constantly broke. <laughs> <laughs> Although I remember there was always YouTube comments saying, "Do a collab with Corey." <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sad we never did. I'm yeah, sure I'm sad we never did as well. Everyone was like, yeah, you got a collab of Corridor. No, it was, hey, it was so I think fun. we even talked about it ages ago. Like, yeah. like it was going to be a big collab, whatever it was. But we well, never... you guys live on the other side of the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. it's, it's harder, it's harder. <laughs> oh my god, here, this is how, how crap we are at editing and how, like, this is because it's just a lot of me and Michael, like, for, like, the edits and stuff. This always makes me cringe at this video, and me pointing this out now, it'll rule the video for, for you as well. Oh god, alright, so, I, I do the color grade, and, like, I'm editing and stuff, and then, like, we're about to put it out. I wanted to change something about the grade, so I changed it. And then when I put it back in, I accidentally moved the city bars at the top. It's like, it's so small, but- That drives me crazy, it drives me crazy. No, oh, no. Do I do Dude, I, oh, I, I, no. I remember calling Danny, I said, remove it. <laughs> and it's like, it's going viral. I'm like, remove it. <laughs> But then we uh, uh, we had a big thing like no one seemed to have noticed, but no. it's like a one pixel, one pixel stripe on yeah. the side yeah, is just yeah. flickering, and you're like, dude, Bleh. no. So 
we shot these back to back. We shot Halo vs Call of Duty, Marvel vs DC, and Walking Dead vs Last of Us all back to back. Oh, same set. In the yeah. same set. Oh, and wow. we just re redressed it with everyone. And there was a Screen Australia that were like a local government funding body. And they're amazing. They were really supportive for us. And like we were able to like grow. This was our first time really managing a real crew. And like this is where we had a production designer. We had like stunts properly for the first time as well. So we were able to like really like learn more and like like another step towards us making a film. I wanted to go back to perfecting what I was doing before this stuff, which was the earlier childhood stuff, which was writing and characters and stories. Like there was never that in the racket videos. And so like there was always something missing creatively for me with the YouTube stuff. Like I was always scared to try and put in like a character or a storyline or anything. It was always like I wanted to go the next level or whatever. And so like that's why talk to me was in response to that. Light the candle to open the door. Blow it out to close it. So this is a horror movie. It's a horror film. Everyone was like expecting a comedy or an action from us. And this was me like being able to really express myself personally, which I never really did with Raka Raka. Like I was scared of how the audience would react. And so like this wasn't made with like the Raka Raka audience in mind. This was just written in a way for me to express like how I was feeling at the time. Put your hand on it. <laughs> Usually you're shooting your own stuff and you're like, you know, you're performing in front of the camera. Here's a film, you're not in front of camera and you're clearly not shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that like? How did you still make it yours? A very in-depth conversations with all parts of it to really convey our vision and then finding someone that we knew we could trust, that we knew was better than us, that was going to teach us things. Mm. And I was like, before I had the departments, I didn't want to look at something and be like, I could have done that. Like if I, if I have that sort of feeling, then I'm like, that's not a good head of department for me. Like when we found our like our key people, it was like, it just elevated things and it made our job being able to focus on stuff that we'd never have time to focus on before, like talking with the actors and like focusing on characters and beats and stuff like that. Like that stuff gets lost in the racket stuff, but with the film stuff, everyone's working together. Yeah, and it's like, say Aaron McCliskey, our DOP, he was open to collaboration. We'd spend every day shot listing together. What about this, you know, coming up with a style for the film. He'd show us things that we'd never seen before. Like it was just working really, really close with the heads of department. It's way better because you have these specialists. Talk to me. She lets in a spirit and we like tilt the camera. So initially here, we had her hair start to float like she was underwater. Oh really? Yeah, so it was like waving and the effects team did such an incredible job and it. it looked so <laughs> good. But for me, it stood out. It, it felt like a V-effect. Even though it seriously looked flawless, it's still, I'm like, it takes me out of it. Once it's like a, a character film and it's like smaller, like already the moment of her getting possessed is such a big thing. To add like an extra element on top of it, I think was too fantastical. Yeah, because then you start thinking about like, oh, what's going on with her hair? Versus yeah. like, what's going on with in her mind? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Kojo Studios, our VFX team there. Uh, they nailed it and I <laughs> said, sorry dudes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry dudes. <laughs> yeah, and I even met the artist that did it. And he was like, so bad. Like before I'd cut it and I, oh, man, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the hard things about directing, man. There is a director's cut that goes for 20 minutes longer. It was tough to cut. A lot of character moments that are really great, but essentially if it doesn't need to be in the film, it doesn't push the story forward. You don't need when you're in the edit because it's all said uh, subtextually and, and, and just through their emotions, you know? So there was a lot of stuff we could cut like that. Oh shit. Is that a puppet? 3D. Really? No. Real. <laughs> it was real. Yeah, this is our amazing special effects team. That's a, an animatronic. But yeah, it's puppeteered. So there's like 400 rods all over it and they're moving it and making it breathe wow. and everything. I was, I was actually there moving its ear. Everything had a practical base and it was always the subtle things that we would add to it, like subtle movements to its face. And then we would even peel back once the VFX were on. So like we initially had like more blinks and stuff like that. Mm. And I was like, it looks too weird. Like mm. even subtly and to the normal eye, people might not think it, but when I was looking at it, I'm like, no, that, that, something about that looks off. That because it was completely done in the computer. Once your movie was picked up, did it change again? No. Or, no, it just That's what, that was uh, amazing about A24. And I think it's maybe for production as well. Like they're very filmmaker first. So like they were never like, oh, we'll just change this or we'll cut this down or we'll do that. Yeah. Like they literally took the film as it is and like have supported the vision and like what was presented. Yeah, there's to them. not, they, wow. they haven't asked to change anything. And even like, you know, I'd say the movie is 97% 
how, like in my mind, it's 97% what I want it to be like. It's basically exactly how we want it, which a lot of people don't get. So we actually got that, which is amazing. Please watch our film, Talk To Me. It comes out July 28th. Please, please, we want to make another movie. Jeez, <laughs> <Yeah>. desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the people that were gonna watch it like, yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we're up against Barbie and Oppenheimer. We need all the help we can get. <laughs> we need all the help we can get. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, making a film. When are you gonna make a film? I mean, we've made one. We've actually made a couple, but nothing, you know, nothing that's on A24 or anything. <laughs> no, I mean, we've made a couple, but it's all been like interesting, like middle grounds between YouTube and movies. Like, you've yeah, never done a full on yeah. commitment to like making a film and trying to get into theaters. It's tough to step away from the YouTube stuff. Mm. Well, it's so know? successful. Like, you're like the channel's like. Yeah, like we, we kind of have this perfect scenario where we have an audience and like a studio and an incredible team. And yeah. like, we don't get to necessarily do a one focus project for a couple of years. Yeah. But on the flip side, we get to do so many different cool things. Yeah. We never would have had an audience without YouTube, you know? We never would have got the experience we did or the eyeballs on us that we did if it wasn't for YouTube. So I'm always thankful to YouTube. You know, so much of filmmaking involves a pitch, an idea, this and that, and you're working with people, you show up here and there for different projects, and then one pops. And you keep that up, you keep that up, and it's not until you put in years and years and meet lots and lots of people that you really have that connection, that network now. And the only way you build that is by being passionate about it and getting out there and doing it. Yeah, yeah. And, and then like even like when we're writing, it was never waiting for funding to write. It's like, like if I like, like just uh, I've, I've got it and I can show people. Get it out of your head, like onto the page, even if it's bad. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you can start with like, oh, how do they do that? Let's try to do our version of that. Like that's what we did as kids. Like we were copying stuff that we watched. Like we were copying Evil Dead and we were copying, you know, Lost or Xena when you were, <laughs> do you love Xena? Xena? What? Yeah, Xena the Warrior Princess. <laughs> do you know Xena Warrior Princess? Yeah, I know, yeah, Warrior Princess. <laughs> do you know this stunt? Explain this one, right Xena? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Explain the physics of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is your Naruto video. Yeah, literally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that wide shot. I still don't know how they did that wide shot. How do they do that wide shot? You know, I bet you they just had her against the sky and just keyed out the blue like a blue screen and just comped her into that other shot. What, in the 90s? They had blue screens in the 90s. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, See this shot right here? You just take that and you key out the blue and you just stick around the shot. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, use it over again, yeah. I don't know about that, uh, Nico. <laughs> <laughs> I think she did it for real. <laughs> hey, she might have. Who knows, they just have a wire dangling and they're just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so ridiculous. It's so <laughs> awesome. This inspired a lot of... Racka Racka. Yeah, like see all our face expressions. Like we have, we like we always have a thing called the Racka face. Like we'd always be like, <laughs> like we'd always that. and that's all from Xena. Like uh, like Xena would always do these ridiculous faces. But like, they had like proper kung fu wire work on like a network TV show, <laughs> and like the stunts of this were good. What's like the hardest stunt you can think of from like just a regular movie that like you guys think back to all the time? My favorite stunt, one of my favorite stunts ever, is in Smallville, the pilot. Wow. Dude, how wild is that? That's how insane. Awesome. That's, That's insane. So I love that stunt to death. God Ooh. dang, that's like such a gnarly car hit. With yeah. Freaking debris and everything. Debris, sparks. Like, did he land on one of the poles? No, 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 the poles are foam. Cause you can tell the weight when he kicks it. He kicks a phone like in it, like yeah, Monk. See? yeah. But like, man, that is ten out of ten stunt to me. That's I, incredible. Yeah. You gotta get this guy on stunt reacts. Who yeah, did this? Who did that? Yeah. What's that you stunt? Like, what is, what else leave you a comment on? if you worked on. If this is you, please leave a comment. Leave a comment. Yeah. And I know what he was thinking. I've got a backpack on. <laughs> <laughs> That's padding enough. When we got into Corridor, I think about the fact that like, in the industry, there's people that are shooting every day and like, I'm trying to get to their level and every day that passes that I don't shoot something and they're shooting, the gap is growing, right? It doesn't matter if you guys are shooting it on like a handled camera or you're shooting it in your backyard, you're practicing filmmaking every single day and you've been doing it every single day. The point now, 
where you guys have an A24 film. We never looked at like, oh, this is getting experience or, or things like that. 24 seven is all we think about is filmmaking, right? Mm -hmm. And like scenes and ideas, like we can't not do it. It was just um, something in us. Like we always just want to be creating. We can't help it. We're always just making something. And as we've just been like that ever since we first picked up a camera. Cause even, even like at, at like eight years old, before we'd even filmed, we were making movie covers, like drawing them up and stuff. Like we had all that stuff where we were just like obsessed with the idea of film mm -hmm. and, and like worlds that you could create that people could escape to is so incredible. It's like amazing. It's the most beautiful thing ever. Anime Rock Paper Scissors 2 is live right now on CorridorDigital.com. Click the link in the description or on the screen here to go check it out. <laughs>